Hey everyone, it's Caitlin again, back with another Boogie Bay book review video in my series. And in today's video, I'm going to give an actual review of a book that I did like a teaser review of um, about a month, month and a half ago. Um, but before I get into it, hit that red button. If you like these videos, make sure you subscribe. You can turn on notifications when I release new content. Um, and I'm probably going to be releasing content about every week now that summer's over and I'm back into more of my school year routine. So make sure you sign up for the notifications and make sure you subscribe. And if you haven't already, you can go follow me over on Instagram at your geeky girlfriend for daily fashion tips, teacher and marriage humor, and so much more. So if you like what you see on this channel, make sure you head over to Instagram to see more um, short videos and posts. So um, I posted a video a few weeks back, probably almost a month ago. Um, it was a teaser review for Verity, and I'm going to give a full review in this video. Um, I actually don't have my book with me because my mom, I, my mom borrowed it and um, I haven't quite gotten it back from her yet. So I'm going to do a full review of Verity by Colleen Hoover. Um, I want to start off by saying I picked up this book on a whim. I was at Walmart waiting for photos to be printed, went into the book section because it said I was going to have like 40 minutes to kill and I didn't want to spend any money in Walmart. So, and I also couldn't really walk around. So I scurry over to the book section, saw Verity sitting on the shelf, and I had heard so many good things about this book that I just picked it up. And in the 40 some minutes that I was sitting there waiting for my photos, I read four chapters of the book. And then I decided that I had to take it home because I wanted to finish it. So right away off the bat, some things that I really liked were that the chapters were very short. I like that. It's very engaging to me. I like when the chapters um, move quickly. I don't like books that have really super long chapters because I feel like I just get bored in the middle of a chapter. So for me, it is a big pro when the chapters move really quickly. The other pro is right off the bat, um, Lowen, who's the main character, witnesses this traumatic event. And so immediately I'm drawn in, into the vibe of this book. And I will say when I picked it up, I was under the impression that Colleen Hoover was a young adult author. And I quickly found out that she is not a young adult author. She is very much an adult author for adult readers. Um, so keep that in mind. If you Now, I'm not saying that these books are not appropriate for young adult readers, especially high schoolers. But just keep that in mind. If you're a parent watching this video, Colleen Hoover is an adult author. She writes very adult content. And I'm going to get into more of that in just a second. But when I picked this book up, I was under the impression that she was a young adult author. And she is not. She's very much an adult author. Now, that is up to you as a parent to decide if you are okay with your child reading these books. I think that they are appropriate for high school students, especially readers over 16. Um, there's nothing that's super inappropriate. It's no worse than Fifty Shades of Grey, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. Um, it is a little bit more mild than that. So just keep that in mind. If you're comparing the two, it's like comparing apples to oranges. But when we talk about sexual literature, erotic literature, that's always my go-to. So it is more mild than that. So if you are like, no, my kid cannot read Fifty Shades of Grey, whatever, that's your right as a parent. But just know that Verity is not as bad, but it's up there. It's way more intense than a young adult novel um, typically is. Typically in a young adult novel, like we can use Fault in Our Stars for, an, for as an example, um, there is a sex scene depicted in that book, but it is very brief and they don't actually like describe any of the sexual intimacy. It simply is just referenced um, in the moments leading up to it. They are taking off clothes, kissing, etc. But then in the moments after it, all you see is like um, Hazel draws a drawing and leaves it for him. So there's no description of the actual sexual acts of intimacy. There are in Verity. So it kind of falls in between the two. Not as depictive and descriptive as in Fifty Shades of Grey, but more so than The Fault in Our Stars. So it definitely falls right there in that middle. So the story follows Lowen, who is a struggling author. She's written a few books. She's kind of in this writer's block slump, witnesses this traumatic event, and she um, goes into a uh, coffee shop to try and clean herself up um, because she's supposed to go into an interview to, with her publisher and like this um, person who wants to hire her to write. And this man goes with her, offers her his shirt, gets her all cleaned up, 
And it turns out that the man who cleans her up is actually the same man that she's going to sit in an interview with. So she has to deal with that awkwardness. Um, and right away, you can tell that there is some chemistry between these two characters, the man being Jeremy. So right away, there is some chemistry between the two. And I'm not going to say anything here that is not on the back of the book. So if you pick up Verity, all this information is on the back. So Jeremy hires Lowen to go and finish his wife's series of books. So Verity is his wife and she has written five, six, however many books in this series, all written from a villain's point of view and like all very popular. But Verity was in an accident and is no longer able to write. So they hire Lowen to finish her series. She's um, brought on. She has to write three different books. And she, in order to get notes, because she hasn't read any of Verity's work, she actually goes to Jeremy and Verity's house and starts looking through Verity's things. When she's doing this, she finds a manuscript that appears to not have been published, appears to have been this big secret, and she starts reading it and is quickly drawn into this web of drama and this web of emotions, this web of like character traits that is Verity. And the whole time she's there, she's trying to figure out if this really is true, if this is a lie, and that kind of continues throughout the whole book. So she finds this manuscript. She feels like she has to finish reading it because she hopes that Verity will redeem herself at the end. And as she keeps reading, it just kind of gets worse and worse. All the while, her and Jeremy's chemistry is bubbling over. It's getting to the point where they can't keep their hands off each other. They're spending time together. And you can already tell where this is going, but I don't have to spoil that for you. I'll let you read it for yourself. But that's where the sexual piece comes in. So just keep that in mind that there is explicit descriptions of sexual intimacy in this book and pretty vivid, but like I was saying a minute ago, not as descriptive as Fifty Shades of Grey, but definitely descriptive. Um, my sister-in-law read this book and she said some of what was said made her a little uncomfortable. Um, and she is a young adult reader. So just keep that in mind. Um, as an adult, it was kind of like, mm, okay, yeah, all right, that's what happens. So it was kind of mild. But I will say, for me, the more intense part was the the mystery of it all and the suspense and the thriller. So I could, I said in my last review, my teaser review, that this book is kind of like Fifty Shades of Grey and Insidious put together because there's definitely a horror film, like a horror film feel to reading this book. There is like ghost story level stuff. Um, she is like seeing things. She like Lowen is seeing things. She's hearing things. Jeremy doesn't believe her. Um, there is like all of there's an incident with a knife at one point. There's an incident with a door locking at one point. Like seriously, ghost story level stuff. Um, and then the manuscript is very creepy and ori eerie as well. So for me, that was the harder part to read versus the sexual intimacy stuff. Um, I'm kind of used to read, you know, I did read all the Fifty Shades books. So that was, like I said, more mild than that. But the creepiness and the horror feel, feel this was the first book that I would say was actually a horror-ish novel that I've read. Um, very mysterious, very suspenseful, very much a thriller. Um, and it was very intense. So I said in my teaser review that I started reading the book at around page 160-ish, picked it up one night, was just going to read a few pages, and I ended up reading it all the way to the end. So in one night, in the manner of about three to four hours, I read like 180 pages of this book and finished it. So all in all, this book took me about four days to actually read, and I had had very little um, time put into the book before I sat down at the 160 page mark. Um, I had only read maybe like the 40 some minutes at Walmart and then another maybe 30 minutes here or there. So really overall my time in the book probably was about five hours and it's probably the fastest I've ever read a book. Um, I could not put it down. I wanted to see how it ends. And then there's a twist at the very, very end, like in the epilogue section, that is just totally unexpected. And then it's kind of leaving you feeling like, what did I just read? And you were like, so convinced that you were one side or the other, you're either 
with Jeremy or with Verity. And there's very clear people on both sides. It's We are right back to the Team Edward, Team Jacob era. But now we're on, do you believe Verity or do you believe Jeremy? Um, or are you kind of in the middle? Um, and the epilogue kind of puts a wrench in all that. You're really set on who you're in favor of and who you think is the villain. And then the epilogue comes and you're like, ooh, maybe I think somebody else is the villain. So it's a really morally ambigu ambiguous book. People, some critics are saying that they don't like um, Lowen and Jeremy's relationship. They think it's morally um, or immoral, I guess I could just say that. It is not um, like Lowen should not have pursued that relationship or Jeremy should not have pursued that relationship wherever you fall on that. Um, but people are definitely split on who is the villain. Is it Jeremy or is it Verity? So I'm interested to know, readers of the internet, which side are you on? Have you read this book? Are you with Verity or are you with Jeremy? Me personally, I'm with Jeremy. I liked Jeremy. I liked him as a character. And I think that Verity is the villain. My sister, on the other hand, she thinks Jeremy's the villain because she really does not like Jeremy. And then my mom is kind of in the middle. She was like, I don't know. I like, I want to believe Verity, but I just don't know if I can. And so even in my small cluster of friends and readers who I've shared this book with, we're all over the place on who the villain is in this story. And it's still up for debate. So I want to know, drop in the comments, do you think Jeremy's the villain? Or do you think Verity's the villain? And um, I want to see the majority of the results. So that is a more full, more detailed review of Verity by Colleen Hoover. I know for a fact it makes me want to read more of her books. I can tell you that right now. Um, and that I already have several others of hers now on my to-be-read list because this one was a great way to dip my toe in um, to Colleen Hoover. But what ended up happening is I like jumped off the high dive into Colleen Hoover. So shout out to you, Colleen Hoover, because you wrote a great book. I give this book like a 12 out of 10. I would recommend it to anybody who wanted a book to read. I think it's great. Um, there is that romance piece of it. There is the drama suspense thriller piece of it. So regardless of where you stand on your genre of books, everything but sci-fi, really, you're going to get a good read out of it. Um, if you're a sci-fi or a manga, obviously this one's not going to be for you. But um, if you're anywhere in the love story, drama, romance, suspense, mystery, thriller, this one's got a little bit of all that. So um, definitely great for multiple readers. And as I said, um, it's up to your discretion if you are a parent on whether you, or not you would let your child read this book. I will say um, the language is mild. It's not terrible. Um, like I wasn't overly, um, it wasn't something that was intense. Like I was annoyed by the amount of foul language in the book. I thought it was very mild, appropriate for an adult novel. Um, once I kind of realized that it was an adult novel, it made it easier to get, get past. Um, but it's very mild. And like I said, um, the sexual content is descriptive, but it's, kind of three fourths into the book. It doesn't happen for a while. Um, so it's not like it's on every page or anything like that. It's um, just a short little segment, um, not including the manuscript. She does mention it in the manuscript a few times, um, but it's probably four to five different accounts throughout the book. Um, and it's just for like a half or a page. So it's up to you where you fall on that. Um, if I was a parent, if my daughter was or son was over 16 and wanted to read this book, I would say yes. Um, but every parent is different and to each their own. I probably would not, I would have, I'm glad that I read this book first before my child picked it up and said, oh, this is what I'm going to read. Because I would have been probably a little upset at that. But since I already read it and know what it is, I would say I'm okay with it. But I'm very um, open when it comes to literature. I think that as long as children are reading and engaging in books, I'm very okay with that. So I'm kind of, I have a, a skewed view, I would say. There are people who are a lot more conservative than myself when it comes to what children should be allowed to read. So take my opinion 
with a grain of salt. I just promote reading and engagement with literature of any level. As long as my children and my family is reading, then that's really um, kind of my stance. Um, I would just want everybody to love reading. Um, so like I said, take that how you will. Um, but there's my full review of Verity. I um, give it a 12 out of 10. I think it's great. I it's it is up there with like my favorite books of all time. It probably sneaked its way into the top 10. And it is easily the best book that I've read this year um, of 2022. So there's my review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you want me to read next. And let me know if you are Team Verity or Team Jeremy in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.